Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Lionel Cave. I'm a master principal cloud architect uh, within Oracle Cloud Infrastructure's cloud engineering team. I'm going to cover really two topic areas centered around OCI simplicity. Uh, the first topic I'll cover is, is using Oracle Cloud Shell to deploy your Terraform code. And the second is, is using VMware HCX for easy uh, VMware migration into OCVS. Uh, each will have a short demo. So let's go ahead and get started. So Oracle has made a deliberate effort to support open systems and tools in OCI. Uh, we, we believe this drastically helps support code mobility. Uh, Oracle is listed as a Terraform provider in the Terraform registry. So it's easy to, uh, to go out and find some references and, and utilize Terraform with Oracle. Um, a common question uh, that I'm asked by customers is where can I find examples of, of solutions or reference architectures? Uh, and fortunately, Oracle has an entire site dedicated to reference architectures and deployment patterns uh, in Oracle's OCI Architecture Center. Uh, there you can find solutions and design patterns that you can then deploy using Terraform-based quick starts in our GitHub repository. Uh, you can find the links to those two sites here in my slide. Um, so let's talk about Oracle Shell for just a moment. Um, so what is it? It's an embedded Linux shell that's pre-authenticated with uh, pre-installed tools to assist OCI users. Uh, once you launch Oracle Cloud Shell, it remains a persistent frame and will remain active while you navigate to various pages of the OCI console. Uh, it's the perfect sandbox for deploying Terraform code within your OCI tenancy. Uh, so what is included with Oracle Cloud Shell? Um, Terraform. OCI CLI, Git, Java, Python 2 and 3, kubectl, Helm, Maven, Gradle, and last but not least, Ansible. So some of the advantages of using Oracle Cloud Shell was number one, it's free, right? No need to deploy dedicated cloud infrastructure for the purpose of Terraform automation. Uh, Tools within Cloud Shell, including Terraform, are always up to date. So configuration is, is extremely simple. Um, it's secure. Terraform configuration files and state files are stored in OCI. Uh, you can also use an OCI bucket to store encrypted state files. Um, and from within the console, you can immediately verify the outcome of your Terraform apply execution. One tool everywhere where your web browser can run. But there are some limitations. Uh, you only have about five gigabytes of uh, local storage, but you can use block or file storage if you need more than that. Uh, storage persistence from session to, is, per, is persistent from session to session. Uh, but after six months after non-use, uh, the admin for the tenancy will get a notification that the storage will be removed at, in 60 days. Uh, the, the actual session persistence uh, is mass length, mass, max length uh, is 24 hours, and the timeout uh, is after 20 minutes of inactivity. Uh, so it's really designed for interactive use with OCI resources. So now I'm going to shift gears and show you a quick demonstration of how we can deploy Terraform code in OCI Shell. So to get started, activate Cloud Shell by clicking on the button in the top right-hand corner. Uh, this will launch a, a, an Oracle Cloud Shell instance. So then if we go over to our Oracle Architecture Center, uh, here you'll find many reference architectures. Uh, the one that I've selected for the demo will deploy a hub and spoke network topology and a bastion host. Um, this happens to be the most popular deployment pattern for customers. Uh, in fact, the center uses this a lot for secure access control purposes. Um, the architecture is also documented in the diagram in diagram form, as you can see here. Uh, you have a hub VCN with two subnets, one for services, another for management. Uh, on the right, you have two spoke VCNs. Uh, we also have VCN peering with local peering gateways between hub and the two spokes. So if you scroll down in the architecture center uh, page, <clears throat> you'll see uh, the deployment guide and a link to our quick start. Uh, you can even deploy Terraform code directly into OCI by clicking on this link. Um, and then there's also a link to our GitHub quick start repository. It has all of the uh, 
the, the configuration files that you can, you can download and get started. So if you copy the URL and then go back to the, uh, the Oracle Cloud Shell that we started earlier, and once I'm there, I'll go into a directory uh, that I created called Quick Start, and I'll use the git clone command before pasting the URL into the console to clone that repo locally. Uh, once that's copied, I can CD into the, that directory. And uh, we do need to set up the terraform.tfvars file with these variables. Um, because we're using Cloud Shell, we already have pre-authentication. So we'll need to comment those three attributes out. So we'll go back over here to, uh, to Cloud Shell and I'll copy a terraform.tfvars file that I have pre-created. Uh, so if you take a look at that file, uh, you'll, you'll see that I've commented out those three parameters. So, uh, so now we can uh, run the terraform apply command and I'll expand the window so we can see that a little bit better. Okay, so uh, so we have 15 resources to be added. Uh, uh, two spoke, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, spoke two, spoke one VCN and a hub VCN and a, and a couple other things. Uh, we'll go ahead and type yes to accept. And, and now the infrastructure is provisioning. So we can take a closer look. Uh, if we go directly to view our VCNs, in one window, we'll be able to see our deployment and now our VCNs are showing up. Our three VCNs are here. Hub VCN, spoke one and two, each with different CIDR block addresses assigned. Now we can look at our peering gateways and we can see that peering has been established for spoke one and two. And if we take a closer look at spoke one, we can see that peering has been established with the hub VCN. So now we're just waiting for the Bastion instance to be uh, complete uh, provisioning. So if, uh, if we go to instances, uh, we can see the Bastion host um, will, be, will still be in a, a provisioning state. <laughs> Click on that. Uh, we can see that uh, it has been assigned to the proper subnet. So, the deployment is exactly how we have defined it in the reference architecture. Um, as you can see here, we have our, our hub VCN and our different components that were just deployed. So now that everything is completed uh, provisioning, we can now log in directly to our Bastion VM using the public IP address, using SSH from directly within the Oracle Cloud Shell. And once we're logged in, uh, we can take a look at the private IP address that's assigned to the primary VNIC. And that looks good. Matches. So we'll go ahead and exit there. Um, <clears throat> so we'll return to the quick start repo directory and run the terraform destroy command uh, with auto approve. And uh, our infrastructure will be removed at this point. Okay, so our, uh, our Bastion host is being terminated. So now we can go verify the, uh, the destruction by navigating back to our, our network section, uh, take a look at our VCN, uh, and we'll be able to see, uh, to see you know, what's left. Okay, our two spoke VCNs have already disappeared. Uh, they've been terminated. So we're still waiting for the Bastion instance to be destroyed. Uh, once, once that completes, our hub VCN will disappear 
Um, it does take a little bit of time. Uh, so, so patience is required here. Uh, just a few minutes and it, uh, it should be finished. Okay, so 15 resources have been destroyed. And that's, uh, that's exactly what we wanted. So dur during our previous session, uh, Steve discussed some of the use cases for OCDS. Um, many customers are very excited about this offering um, and its capabilities as they are really looking to, to augment their cloud strategies without introducing costs and the risks that are inherent with change. Uh, with OCVS, we can easily lift and shift entire VMware estates into OCVS and provide the same level of access and control as an on-premise data center. Um, and there's really two components that we use to facilitate uh, you know, these seamless migrations into OCI. One is uh, the VMware Hybrid Cloud Extension, or HCX, and the other is Oracle's Fast Connect service. So for those of you that are not familiar with HCX, um, it's an application mobility platform. And it, uh, it provides workload rebalancing, uh, business continuity across data centers and clouds, provides hybrid interconnect uh, to, uh, to enable the application migration. Uh, it also helps to migrate uh, older VMware versions uh, through several different types of migrations. And um, a little bit about Oracle's uh, Fast Connect service. Uh, you can use private or public peering or both. Uh, with, with private peering, uh, you can extend your existing infrastructure into the virtual cloud network, um, for example, to implement a hybrid cloud or uh, a lift and shift scenario. Uh, with public peering, you can access public services in Oracle cloud infrastructure without using the internet, uh, such as a storage gateway or API gateway <coughs> or uh, accessing other services that uh, we have available. Our Fast Connect service comes in really two flavors, uh, a one gigabyte or 10 gigabyte uh, speeds, and you get up to 10 terabytes of data transfer free uh, per month. So uh, now I'm gonna show you a, a live demonstration of uh, a, a VMware migration uh, from a customer site in Toronto, uh, Canada, to an OCVS software defined data center in the OCI San Jose region uh, using HCX. So in this scenario, I'm logged into a jump server in Toronto uh, where I've set up a simulated customer software defined data center. Um, I'm gonna set up a, a continuous ping to the private IP address of the VM I'm gonna migrate. And uh, uh, you'll, be able to, you'll be able to watch uh, you know, what happens uh, when we do that migration uh, you know, while, we're, uh, while we're pinging this system. As you can see, the, the private IP address, you know, it's responding to pings and it's local to the Toronto data center. Um, so as we, uh, as we, as we're shifting over to this other IDB console I've running in our OCI San Jose region, uh, this OCI environment is running version 7.01. Uh, we do not have this virtual machine running yet. And in this VMware software defined data center, we'll start a ping. Uh, you can see that uh, it's taken about uh, 83 milliseconds, and that's because it's traversing across the continent. Um, so one thing I'll point out with this setup is we do have a stretched, we have stretched our layer two network between SDECs. If we look in um, HCX Manager, you can see our Toronto data center and then our uh, our data center in, in OCI there in San Jose. Um, so we're, we're keeping the same layer three address space, uh, which makes it much easier to migrate whole data centers. Um, so to get started, we'll go ahead and uh, select the virtual machine by right clicking, right clicking, and then HCX actions and select migrate to HCX target site. This will launch the wizard. And uh, once you add your options, you can hit validate. Uh, and then we can hit the, uh, the go button. Once you hit go, it'll start the migration. It'll take a few minutes uh, before you can see anything in vCenter. However, if you look within HCX, you'll, you will start to see updates right away. Um, if you go into services and migration, uh, you'll see the migrations already started. Um, if we go back to the Toronto SDEC and look at the details for this virtual machine, uh, I've got about 16 gigabytes of hard drive space. Uh, so we'll take a little bit of time to migrate. Uh, so now you can see uh, the migrations kicked off. Once the bulk of the storage has been copied, 
uh, it'll it'll flush the memory. <clears throat> and as you can see, we only lost one ping. And now the VM is moved over to San Jose.